as I began to try to figure this out, uh, cut out these two caps. I think this is the original cap right here. So I'm going to leave it just because I can trace down where it's connected. And can... Alright, these two caps that are tied, the minus is tied together on. That's these two caps right here. 13A and 13B. 40 mic. They tie to both sides or to each side of that resistor and other tie points too. So this is a 40 mic. This uh, this side and this side's a 40 mic. So let's cut these two big things out of the way and we'll have more room to work. Have those two in. And we're going to tackle this guy next. This is C12. Goes to pin 3, the 25Z6, the minus leads do. And there is a resistor in between them. And then the positive leads go to ground. So we've got these two caps replaced. And, th and these two. Right here and right here. This will be next. And there's another one right up here. Pretty sure that's an original cap. Next cap in line was this one right here. Goes to pin A to the rectifier tube. 30 mic. That is a 450 volt. Right here. So there's a ground lug right here on this tube socket. So I used it for the ground. And pause the lead there. And the B section of the one we just replaced is right here. And it goes to the, actually goes through a resistor to the tuner oscillator. This wire. So I just reused it. There's our ground where the other one was grounded. So that's six of the caps. I think we got two more to go. And this is the last electrolytic and a power supply. Now we've got some other caps to replace, of course, but that should be all of the ones taken care of in the power supply. And this is on the rider schematic. It is C10, A and B, and just goes on each side of the choke. Three leads coming out. We'll get that dude changed, then we'll continue on. And, got it loose here, and in fact it does go to the filter choke. There's the filter choke. Alright, those two put in. It was still an original cap, and I could restuff it and mount it back where it was at. But for right now, that'll work. So we're making progress. I'm going to do some more checking here, just looking at the circuit and making sure that I have ever have everything hooked up the way it should be. Getting close to hooking some power up and see if we can get some voltage on this thing. And I did unhook the selenium rectifier, that's what these two leads here are for. Uh, just put a modern silicon rectifier, we'll turn the power right on and we're going to just start out slowly. They're drawing about six tenths of an amp, so that's that's good. And we are getting some voltage out of the rectifier. And it's not fully conducting yet, so it'll take it a couple of minutes to get going if we're okay. Now it's coming up. Let's, let's run our voltage on up. See what we get. Alright, that's about 105 volts. Oh yeah. And we're drawing a little less than an amp. About 9 tenths of an amp. Well, it's been about 5 minutes since I powered it up. 
and we're 100 and 810 volts and we're still drawing a little less than an amp 345 on the B plus all right well I'm gonna turn it off been a successful first day made a lot of progress so I still got a long way to go for this set of B playing but but good first day and while I'm changing the caps in the set I pulled this high voltage board out mounts up in the cage wasn't easy to get out but from what I've read and just looking at the condition of these caps I think it's very necessary to change all of these too. So there's three caps that I want to change. I've already clipped this one out. So that one and this one are 0.25 600 volt so I'll put both of them in. And then this is a high voltage cap here and you can see it's it's leaking so I'm sure it's bad, so we'll make sure we replace that. And we'll check these resistors. That one looks like it's been pretty hot. We'll probably just put new ones in while we're in here. Might be a good idea. And what I'm doing here, I'm just changing all the paper caps, especially in the a, in a, in a vertical and horizontal circuits. This is messy because I'm just tacking the caps in with long leads. Once I get the set going, then I'll clean that up to where they look better. Well, after changing just a couple of paper caps, I now have a picture. Now, you know, it's still not right, and my sound's not too bad. Wanted to show you what I found that was keeping me from getting any kind of high voltage on this set. I was having no success, and then when I pulled the high voltage oscillator board out, it has a rectifier tube and an oscillator tube, and replaced those caps in it, when I put it back in, I was confirming that I had the orange and the yellow wire hooked up to the right terminals. Uh, this one's orange, that one's yellow. They go on the top two terminals and go through this coil and then on down to the circuitry. Well, the yellow wire, which is right here, L26. And that connection goes two places, two main places. It goes to a resistor and on to the filament pin one of the 7JP4. And I had that. The other end of it goes from here all the way back to the power supply and it connects to C13 which is a two section cap with a 680 ohm resistor between the two sections. Goes to the minus terminal on that cap and on, then on down to pin four of the 25Z6. That's this connection right here. It's going to the power switch. That's going to the, the thermistor I put in the filament line just for a softer start. And then connect, connects to pin four of the 25Z6. So the yellow wire from here goes directly to that tie point right here. Well, it didn't. Whoever had worked on this set before, they had this yellow wire going to this terminal right here and that's actually the goes to one of the high voltage caps off of pin 5 of the 12, 12SN7 the vertical output tube so there was no way that was right I knew 
that, that was that shouldn't be there so I just clipped it loose this is a wire the yellow wire clipped it loose from here and I've got it just wrapped around that thermistor lead and now we have high voltage looking better and better seems like the more of those paper caps I change in the video circuit the better it looks three or four more that are in the audio circuit uh, I will change them, and I'm not concerned with them right now. I'm trying to get the get the picture looking better. Well, now that I've replaced all of the caps except the audio circuit, looking this over, I'm thinking about restuffing these old caps. Uh, this one was definitely original, mounted right up here and connected here where I have these two. And then finally, this is an original 30 mic dual section, and it would replace these two down here that I have tacked in. So plenty of room for that one. And the paper caps, I think I counted 18 that I've replaced. I may, I may try to restuff all of them that I can. Well, I can just restuff these two caps. These are originals. And you can even see the part numbers on them. 45B, 124, and 123. Well, I need two more. And I'm going to make my own. I'm just going to use this tubing. This is off of Christmas paper wrapping. And I'll just cut these tubes. Approximate size of these. Then I'll paint the tubes, and I think that brown right there is pretty darn close to the originals. So I'll paint the tubes brown, and the end caps are black. So I'll, I've got to make some end caps, of course, for this, for this, and I'll paint them black and glue them in. We'll put new caps in there. Each each one will have two two caps in each housing. And I'll put some extension wires where they look similar to these wires here on this old one. And then I'll need some labels to kind of mimic what's on the old caps. So here's what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to take some water slide paper. These are my my two that I'm ready to print on some just got this on some scrap paper to test it but you put the water slide paper in the inkjet printer print these out and then you spray them with some clear just two to three coats and then once that dries you just cut them out put them in water and once they separate they'll slide off and you can just slide them right on the tube so I'll show you how I'm doing that as I go First time I've ever tried something this this complicated to make some new caps, but like I stated, this this set's really worth spending some extra time on because it is a pretty unique set. Good thing about these are pretty stiff and they'll bounce back even after you mash them so there you go so I got my two tubes made and next we'll make us some end caps and I'm using some cardboard not real thick but it's pretty stiff because I am going to be running the wires out of the cardboard so we want it to be a little stiff two that fit pretty tight those would be the ones I'll paint black and then these two fit a little looser so they will just have holes in them for the wires to come out and it'll be pushed back down and I'll fill the outside with the brown hot glue
Well, I think that's going to match pretty close. And there's my two ends that I have painted black. There's our completed cap housings. Pretty close match. And there's the black ends. I need to glue those. I haven't, I just got them pushed in there. We'll glue them in. And we'll put our caps in here. Put the cardboard with the leads running out of the cardboard. And finish it off with some brown hot glue. And just a dab of hot glue on the ends. We'll finish those two caps up. Need to restuff these two old ones, but then we'll have our four electrolytics ready to go back in. Well, that one was quite a job. I had to pretty much just dig it out. It didn't want to all slide out in one piece. As you can see, there's a couple of bigger pieces and lots of little pieces. But got them cleaned out, so we're ready to restuff these two. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.